my friends. No, you are not having deja vu. It just so happens the Grammy Museum has a lot of great stuff going on right now and I wanted to make more than one video showcasing it. So you saw Cheech and Chong the other day. Now we're gonna check out the John Lee Hooker exhibit. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, hello my friends. Today we are back at the Grammy Museum. And since they have so many cool exhibits, I decided to turn this into multiple days. So it's our next one, the John Lee Hooker exhibit. Many of you know him as Mr. Boom, 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 Boom. A lot of people think blues singers write when they're sad and lonely. They think you gotta be down and out to write the blues. Hungry, broke, it's not true. I write them when I got a good feeling, when I'm happy, when things are going well for you. You write. You can't be upset and worried and write the blues. The songs are sad. And they think you're sad when you're writing them, but you're not. You're just in a good mood for writing blues. So that's why he was so successful. Now here, if you don't know anything about John Lee Hooker, they kind of give you a brief rundown. King of the Boogie, and it says he helped define the post-World War II electric blues. Electric blues with one chord grooves that were once both ultra primitive and modern. His stepfather teached him how to play, and as a teenager, he ran away to Memphis Finally settling in Detroit in the late 1930s. His first hit, Boogie Chillin', was released in 48. His career had begun in earnest. And then it says down here, by the mid 60s, other bands were citing him as an in influence and during the British invasion, bands like the Animals acknowledged him and recorded his songs. Now right here, they have a great timeline to the life of John Lee Hooker. And right away it says that he was gifted his first guitar by one of the guys that his sister was dating. 1924. Sometimes you just never know what's going to spark the influence. Now it says here in the 30s, 1938, John Lee Hooker moved to Detroit, Michigan. Joined the army to impress women lying about his age to enlist. When they found out how old he was, they discharged him. And then he was about 10 years later discovered playing in bars by T-Bone Walker and would give Hooker his first electric guitar. Now here you can see where uh, John Lee Hooker was making music with electric guitars up there in 1955 but then by 1960 he moved away from performing in bars and started doing coffee houses so that he could play acoustic and then 1960 he played the Newport Folk Festival. Now up there it says in 1962 he released Boom Boom Boom, one of his biggest songs. And then by 1964, the Animals had recorded a hit version of Boom Boom Boom. He was living in Detroit, race riots broke out near where he was living and during a session for an upcoming blues album, he partnered up with Buddy Guy. That's a big 67. The blues come from way back. When the world was born, the blues was born. John Lee Hooker. Let's check that out. In 1990, he finally got his first Grammy for Best Traditional Blues Recording. And then in 1991, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And in 2001, John Lee Hooker died in Los Altos. Now this right here is actually a prototype of the John Lee Hooker Signature Epiphone Guitar. Known as a hollow body. There's a copy of the album cover from that performance in Newport in 1964 I showed you. And then there is a signed photo to Mike from John Lee Hooker. Look at the signature. You can tell the ends backwards. Probably tells you quite a bit about his childhood. Now of course that's a basically a copy or a replica of the same guitar that he was playing throughout the early 60s and all the way up until 1971 when he was with uh, Canned Heat doing Hooker and Heat. This is one of his shirts. And then over here we've got the, uh, the Gibson guitar and you can tell if you look at the, uh, the frets they have the dots whereas the other one had a an inlay pattern. And it says that John Lee Hooker remained loyal to Gibson and Epiphone pretty much his entire career. And if you don't know, Epiphone was always considered kind of the um, 
the junior model or maybe the less expensive model of Gibson. The Blues Man John Lee Hooker album. Here's one of his suits. They said that as he got older and he started making money, his style became undeniable. He prided himself on looking good on stage and dressing nice and so his wife donated one of his classic 90s suits. And there's another one of his albums, Born in Mississippi, Raised Up in Tennessee. And here you can see the, uh, there's some of his socks, those star socks and his wallet. Now in this case, they have a lot of, looks like uh, tour memorabilia. You can see shirts from different events, different people he performed with. So let's get a little closer and take a look. Here's one of his coats. That's like a, uh, a trench, almost like a, a pea coat, trench coat type deal. Pretty fancy, man. Pretty looks good. And there's a free beer and chicken album. Some of his uh, production passes up there. Photograph of him and Stevie Ray Vaughan, and Jimmy Vaughan. Says he collaborated with the brothers on his popular single Boom Boom Boom. He was a huge inspiration to both Jimmy and Stevie Ray. And there's a picture of B.B. King and John Lee Hooker and White Kappas. Now this guitar is really cool because this is the guitar, man. It says John Lee Hooker owned his first guitar at the age of seven, but 1947, when Hooker was 30 years old, blues guitarist T-Bone Walker introduced him to the electric guitar, and Hooker played this Honor HJ5 jazz electric guitar during his live performances. This is the rice paper design for the uh, the 1991 tour t-shirts. This was like kind of the layout and how they were going to make them. Then here's one of his, one of the tour jackets. For the Healer tour in 1990. There's him with Robert Cray. Here's kind of a younger picture in 1989 of uh, John Lee Hooker with the Rolling Stones on the Steel Wheels tour and it says it was for a pay-per-view special and then down here was an end of end of days photo of them obviously Keith's still alive but I met John Lee Hooker's end of days that's cool there's some early footage wonder if that's uh wonder if that's Newport wonder if that's the Newport festival that could be now this actually might, might be my favorite now this one actually might be my favorite case out of them all. Because here you can see he's wearing the suit right here, this pinstripe suit to meet, uh, meet with the president. And there's the suit right there. So cool. And then you can tell this was his hat because uh, you can see he wrote his own name upside down on the, the band. There's the uh, Monterey Bay Blues Festival Lifetime Achievement Award presented to John Lee Hooker in 1999. There's his Outstanding Blues Award. There was a proclamation showing that it became John Lee Hooker Day in San Francisco for his 85th birthday and he actually opened a club in San Francisco in the Fillmore district called Boom Boom. Now this is a uh, Tanzania stamp of John Lee Hooker that they issued. How cool is that? The, uh, although John Lee Hooker was loyal to Gibson and Epiphone, he also played his custom Washburn semi hollow body. This was his Washburn guitar. He would play live. Now this is awesome. It says as much of a fan as he was of the blues, he was also just as much of a fan of baseball and specifically his Los Angeles Dodgers, which is kind of crazy for a guy living in San Francisco to be a Dodger fan. So there's a team signed bat that was given to him as a gift. Look at that. And then they, they had this presented to him. It was a uh, John Lee Hooker on a baseball card painting in Dodger gear. That is so cool, right? 
There's him with Miles Davis, Roy Rogers, Taj Mahal. They were doing the soundtrack for Hotspot. It says this was his one of his shirts that he would wear to the Dodger games. This blue shirt it was uh, a Jeffrey Bean shirt donated by his wife. And then here was a John Lee Hooker 1991 album. Mr. Lucky was co-produced by three notable guitarists: Carlos Santana, Roy Rogers, and Ry Cooter. Hooker featured several distinguished musicians on the album, including Keith Richards, John Johnny Winter. Booker T. Jones, Johnny Johnson, and Van Morrison. This acoustic guitar was signed by Hooker, Cooter, and Morrison. Best wishes. Whoever Archie was. What a cool exhibit, man. They have some good stuff here. This really gives you an insight into John Lee Hooker's life. It really does. Now look at this monstrous, absolutely monstrous discography. I mean, we're talking almost every year no kidding look from 59 these are all 59 60 59 60 I mean this guy this guy was putting in the work 61 62 63 64 65 oh did he take a year off nope there's something from 65 66 67 Wow oh it looks like he did take 68 off must have got lazy that year I'm kidding Good job, John Lee Hooker. Now this is pretty cool. This is some more of his stuff, and here's one of his suits right here. And he's pictured wearing that suit with Carlos Santana right up there. Here you can see a, uh, some art signed by John Lee Hooker for the healer. Some of his uh, old 8x10s. There's one of him with Bonnie Raitt. Some of his Grammy Awards. Some of his Grammy medals, which is cool. I've never even seen stuff like that. Then you have some more of his trophies and the uh, Outstanding Blues album for California Music Awards. And then that suit, man, they weren't kidding. He really loved to wear those pinstripe suits. So here's some John Lee Hooker wine and it says that his longtime manager, uh, Michael Kappas, started exploring opportunities of getting John Lee Hooker's name out there in as many avenues as possible. And since they were up there in uh, Northern Cal, they got him on some wine. Now look at the lapels here. This was his tuxedo. Nice and flashy, man. Nice and flashy for sure. Way cool. Some more of his awards. His book. And then uh, obviously his, his death memorial program. What a fantastic exhibit they've done here, man. Good job, Grammy Museum. Absolutely great job. Now here they have a uh, like a little vocal booth that you can go into and you can perform with John Lee Hooker. Sing along. Isn't that cool? They, that's one cool thing about the Grammy Museum. They really have some interactive stuff. So if you've never heard John Lee Hooker, you can put the headphones on, listen, you can watch his videos, you can just participate. It's pretty cool. For being Mr. Happy Blues, you almost wonder what happened in 1988 to provoke the, uh, the album Sad and Lonely in 1989. One of the things I always love about going to museums is when they have these kind of like old posters that kind of give you a retrospective and so they did that here with like these old blues festivals and old album posters. Oh this is cool, this is an ad for the Rosebud Music Agency. I can only imagine what kind of chaos this company must have put up with if they had John Lee Hooker, Muddy Waters, Captain Beefheart, he was always a trouble, George Thorogood, I mean pretty interesting roster. And there, Mike Kappas and, and Rosebud did an honorary uh, happy 50th anniversary in the biz. There's a great poster for that album where he had all those guest appearances. Look at all the people on there. Van Morrison, Keith Richards, Johnny Winter, Albert Collins. Wow. Rad. I don't know if I ever heard this album or not. There's a performance in Anaheim. And that one's a tour with Robert Cray drawing of boom 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 so he must have got into creating art when he was older I've seen a couple of hand-drawn things of him in here 
Now, I listen to this one a lot. When I worked in a record store when I was in high school, I used to put this album on a lot because I was learning blues on guitar at that time. So my favorites were like Albert Collins, Albert King, John Lee Hooker. I think they outdid themselves at this exhibit. I mean, they. I came here when they did one for X, but I think the John Lee Hooker one was probably even cooler. Yeah, I can't say enough nice things about the exhibit that the Grammy Museum put on for John Lee Hooker and the one that you guys saw the other day for, uh, for Cheech and Chong. Good job, Grammy Museum. You know, sometimes, like I always say, timing is everything, and I was just standing here admiring this picture, and somebody walked up and said, yeah, he's actually buried near my house, and we started talking about how long uh, John Lee Hooker lived up in the Bay Area. And I said, yeah, I was reading in there that he used to have a, a club there in the late 90s. Too bad that's not around there. And he said, no, it's still there. He goes, it's, uh, it's still in the same place in the Fillmore District. And he said they have a, uh, a table there that says always reserved for John Lee Hooker. So next time I'm up at the Bay Area, I'm going to have to stop in and go to Boom 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 and check it out. They have some great merch here. Check it out. They even have some of his uh, socks that you can buy. Great job, Grammy Museum. Grammy Museum has some really great merch. Check out, they even have fitted hats. Well, I gotta say, the Grammy Museum did a great job with the John Lee Hooker exhibit. Actually, both exhibits we saw. So, this is a prime time to come and check out what's going on here. I highly recommend it. Well, there's the historic pantry. I am gonna have to go eat there at some point. Go vlog that someday. And of course, here's the weird art slash, I don't know, what it, is that supposed to be a compass? School compass or something? I don't know. Let's go home. Look at that mural on the ceiling. I do what I can. Well, we're gonna call it a day, my friends. Hope you guys enjoyed all the stuff that we saw at the Grammy Museum. I can only try and bring you part of the experience. I'll never be able to replace actually being there. And out of everything you saw over the last couple of days, you know, I probably only showed you maybe less than half of what's there. So it's really worth going to see if you can. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Three.